You know, Jason, we as we were discussing with Dan, I feel like we have a flock of canaries now. What was Target became Walmart, became FedEx, and then you had a Micron, and now you got Nike, and then you got Carnival. I mean, at what point do we really stand up and say we may have a bigger problem than we thought with earnings because inflation has remained sticky for too long, pricing power is evaporating in front of our eyes, and margins are going to get hit as a result, and then ultimately those stock prices are going to go down. Yeah, no doubt, Scott. I mean, obviously, we saw a PCE uh, earlier this morning that was hotter than expected now, albeit still moderating some. But inflation is a, is a genie that's out of the bottle and it's hard to put back in, right? So, obviously, we've, we also heard from the Fed uh, this week a lot of commentary. They're going to stay engaged, as, as they should, because inflation is, continues to be a problem. The other thing I would say as, you, as it relates to, to margins, we heard from Nike, as you mentioned, Walmart, Target, inventory is absolutely a problem. We have a supply glut. Uh, supply chains have began to ease. So there's a lot of inventory that was bought up in Q1, Q2, uh, that now we have to get rid of and unload, and, and that's clearance pricing, so margins are under pressure. So I think a lot of that will show up. Uh, in earnings, unfortunately. And, and as Victoria mentioned, FX is a, just a major problem. Um, that's going to hit a lot, of, a lot of the tech names uh, that we've all so loved over the last decade, uh, which I think a lot of these names will start to feel some pain with demand slowing globally. So there's a lot of headwinds that I think still remain in the front view uh, that we're all going to have to contend with as we, as we go through the rest of the year. Down a even 500, it looks like we're settling out as we still uh, come to the end of this day and month and quarter, uh, all, you know, uh, in crescendo, really, of the negative sentiment that's existed for so many weeks now. Victoria, if you think we're going lower from here, let, let's say we're at 3,600 because we're just shy of, of that. What's a reasonable place you're looking to put some new money to work in, figuring you're a long-term investor and at some point you're just going to do it, you're not going to be able to pick the exact moment anyway? Sure. I, I, I'm tempted at 35. I really like it at 34, and I'm buying the hell out of it at 32. 32? Hey, hey, Victoria. 32. I mean, if you're a buyer, at th I, I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but if you're a buyer at 3,500, we're at 3,585. Is that yep. is that not close enough? No, and that's what I talked about. We're near capitulation, right? You're seeing the general start to fall. Your Apples, your Microsoft, your Googles, your untouchables have become touchable this year. And so when that starts to happen, your generals fall. You have 90% plus down days. You have this sentiment that has soured so much. You have analysts capitulating and giving up their positioning. That takes to be closer to the bottom. Also, historically, when we have a bad month as we had in September, that's closer to the end of the bear market. And so I look at all these signals, and I'm getting a little bit excited that that Q4 is probably going to be the end of the pain. I don't think the Fed puts coming in Q4. I'll slow that, slow that roll right there. But I think that they could be seeing the pain. And the one thing I really, really want to see, and I know this sounds counterintuitive, but if unemployment starts to creep up or unemployment creeps up quickly, that is going to be a signal that things have gotten bad enough that it's going to get good for the Fed. And that's the signal the market's looking for. So when I talk about starting to buy at 3,500, I'm not putting all in. But as you talked about, dollar cost averaging on your way down is a tried and true strategy of how to make money in a bear market. And I always remind investors, similar to what Warren Buffett says, investors make their money in a bear market, but it's very difficult to pull the trigger because you're pulling the trigger when the world feels the darkest since the market's a leading indicator. So you're going to buy when earnings look bleak, when analysts are adjusting down, when downgrades are happening, when credit spreads are blowing out. That is the time to start to be a buyer, and I think we're getting yeah, very, gonna, very close. I, I, I got to interrupt. And I'm going to disagree for a second here. <laughs> like the idea that I would be a buyer when the unemployment rate is going up is what's confusing to me. And I know there's a lot of people out there making the case that the Fed's going to stop at some point and the stock market's going to rip. And I think inherent in this is the confusion that I feel, at least speaking for myself, that I feel in the market right now. We sold off 25 percent in front of the broad economic weakness that, that I think is a foregone conclusion at this point. Why would I be a buyer of stocks as the ISM starts moving below 50, as the unemployment rate starts turning up, as corporate earnings estimates start worsening? That seems counterintuitive to me that I want to buy as that starts, as that stuff, which is for 100 years of market history been negative for stock prices. Why would I start buying them right now? 
Some, some have been negative, but you have to think about this. We're at historically low unemployment, so it's going to come up, and that's the only thing that's going to stop the Fed. And the moment the Fed puts any type of capitulation out there, any time change in verbiage, any change in the way they're speaking, you know the market's going to rally on that. So no, I don't want to be super early. I'm not buying the very growthy sectors. I'm staying a little defensive, but if you have dry powder, and I like to stock when it was trading at 100 and it's trading at 75 now, I think you start to average your way back in. And some of those are very, very lagging indicators. And so they're going to move late. Think about the best time to buy in 2008, March 2008. Numbers were terrible. What was the best time to buy in 2020? Yeah, the March stuff, but 2020. Victoria, Numbers were terrible. Was getting better in, everything was getting better in March.